Cutting out something like this, just a circle with the hot knife is an option. I have irregular edges on this. I think you can see that there. Um, and now I got to go back with the file and clean that up, which is not real hard, but I did the other circle with just a utility knife and that worked out fine too. So whatever you're comfortable with, you got a couple options if you're doing something like this. The real bonus of using uh, the hot knife, um, this is a straight blade, but when you put one of your custom blades on there that you've bent to a profile that you're going to be using, that's where this tool really shines. In the spots where the hot knife stayed a little bit too long, there can be some of these areas where the foam melts and then it cools and it becomes really hard. So it's hard to get in there with sandpaper. So I like to get that out with the file. Uh, so when I come back in with the sandpaper, after the file, after the filing is done and I've got those hard parts out, it's easier to sand. Also, I wanna make sure I've got a really well-defined edge. If there's any places where it's choppy like that, I like to come in there with the file and define that edge before I come in with the sandpaper. Sandpaper is not good for defining edges. It's good for smoothing things out. So I, I do all this kind of work with the file. So I've got this sanded pretty well, and now I'm going in with my mixture of three parts joint compound to one part light brown paint. And I'm just using my finger. You can use a brush for this. Uh, but I'm going into the carved letter and just filling in any gaps that I have. Some places where the foam didn't sand smoothly, where it's uh, just a little bit choppy. I want to fill all those in, but I'll just go ahead and fill the whole letter in. I don't want to put a ton of this in there because I don't want to have to come back and do a ton of sanding afterward. You realize when you're working with foam, it's the same as wood in that if you do kind of a poor job in your cutting, in your earlier steps, if you're not really exact, you're going to make up for it on the back end by doing a lot of sanding and manipulation to kind of correct your mistakes, to make it exact and make the final product what you want it to be. So you want to do everything as exact as you can, but you kind of learn that as, as you go, just like with woodworking. Here's another good practice. Have some extra foam pieces here so you're not laying these 10 pound weights down on your foam. I'll go ahead and glue up the back of this foam. So basically what I've done here is I've made some cuts in the foam and I just did this with this, this foam knife. What I was trying to do is just kind of scrape out some on the surface of each stone uh, to kind of make it have some uh, variation and look like it was uh, 
hand cut uh, each stone and then through here I used a different blade that I had pinched up a little bit tighter uh, so it was a little bit tighter of a loop than this and I just went through here and, and cut uh, what would be the line between the stones uh, where you would have the uh, grout in between. I put a little bit of dark down here into some of these uh, recesses and places that I cut out but I think it's maybe a little bit too much of a contrast uh, so I'm not sure that I really love the way that's turned out. Uh, let me show you what I've done. I'm just kind of experimenting right now. Uh, what I've done here on the face I had the, the gray uh, and joint compound mixed up, so I started putting it on the face of these stones, and then I took little scrap pieces of foam, and after I had a little base of that joint compound and gray paint, I put some pieces of foam on there, and then covered them with the same gray paint joint compound mix, uh, and I think that's going to look pretty good. It's going to look like uh, some of the raised areas that would be there in a... Uh, natural stone that had been cut when the joint compound and gray paint was still wet. I took some little dots of black paint and just kind of dotted them around and then kind of brushed them in uh, to make some variation in the color. And what I think I'll do is maybe just go over this just a tiny bit more with some of the gray paint joint compound mix and then uh, I'll sand it just a little bit. I don't want to sand it too much because I do want it to look a little bit rough like natural stone would. But that's some of the uh, different techniques that I've played with. And when I start a lot of these projects and different parts of these projects, I don't have it all figured out as far as what techniques I'm going to use. Uh, so I try some different things and I experiment. So this is the uh, back of the front of the fireplace. And what I'm doing, I'm just putting some uh, little pieces of foam block in here uh, as kind of just a guide. Uh, when I put this piece in, it's going to be in a curve like this. So I need those backer pieces there uh, to hold it in place. I want to put the painter's tape on to hold the panels together and hold them in place to make sure the edges are lined up and they're tight together when the hot glue is drying. If you wait until after you put the hot glue on and join the pieces to start peeling off the pieces of tape off the roll, you're going to be a little bit too late. And I like to already have them stuck to one of the foam pieces so after I get the hot glue in there I can just pull the pieces together and smooth the tape over the other foam, the other adjoining foam piece. This is the top of the fireplace, so this will be above the mantle, this piece. And then over here you can see we have the fireplace. There's the mantle and the fireplace and the uh, hearth there. Back there are the doors to the wardrobe. Here are some of the library panels that aren't fully painted yet. I've got one coat on there. And then over here, we've got the other pieces of the wardrobe. And then back here, I've got the other part to the wardrobe with the lion head there. That's going to be the top. But very crowded and, and messy in here right now. So looking forward to uh, finishing this up and getting it in place. This is for the fireplace for the logs to sit on and I may uh, make that a little bit closer to the ground it may be sitting up just a tad too high I'll see when I get everything done if so I can just trim a little bit off the legs there.